Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Laplace Transform Tutor. Here we're going to solve another differential equation. As we go along, we'll ratchet up the complexity a little bit uh, so that you can get a variety of different types of problem types and also challenge yourself and get some skills. The other thing I'll say is that Many of you watching this may not be taking a differential equations class right now, but it's okay because by doing these problems, you're getting practice with taking the transform and also inverting, taking the inverse transform. So even if you don't care much about differential equations in specific, by doing these problems, you're getting a lot of practice with the Laplace transform. So let's say we have the problem d, uh, third derivative of x, minus the second derivative of x is equal to zero. So that's a typical differential equation uh, in the operator notation. So it's the third derivative of x of t minus the second derivative of x of t is equal to zero. The initial conditions that are given in the problem statement is x of zero is equal to x prime of zero is equal to x double prime of zero, which is equal to three. So basically, at time zero, the function is equal to three, its first derivative is equal to three, and its second derivative is equal to three, all at time zero. Notice also, this is a third, uh, third order differential equation, so because the highest derivative in the whole thing is a three, there has to be three initial conditions in order to solve it. That's a property of differential equations. You always have to have uh, the same number of initial conditions as the highest derivative in order to, to actually do anything, or to, in order to, to lock down the solution. So we apply the same thing. We're going to take the Laplace transform of everything, and we're going to do it separately. So I'll have the Laplace transform, this should be a three actually, of the third derivative, and then the Laplace transform of the second derivative. And on the right-hand side, we'll go ahead and take the Laplace transform of zero. So we're just applying that Laplace transform to each, each and everything. Now for the third derivative, when we come down here and see what we wrote, the Laplace transform has an s cubed times the Laplace transform minus x s squared times this minus s times the first derivative minus the second derivative there. So it's going to get kind of complicated, not super complicated. What you're going to have is s times the, the Laplace transform. Then you have a minus, uh, and actually it's going to be an s let me erase this and give a little more space. It's going to be s cubed. The first s that you have always matches the order of the derivative that you have. Then you have your Laplace transform. Then you go down one power in s, and then you have the initial condition. And then you go down another power of s, and you have the first derivative. And then you go down another power of s, which means it disappears. And then you have the second derivative, all evaluated at 0. All right? So that's what you get. All of this stuff just comes from this term right here. All right, now I'm going to run out of space if I keep going. So I'm going to put a subtraction here with another bracket, with another parentheses, and we're going to do this Laplace transform. So because this is a second derivative, you'll have a second derivative, then you'll have the Laplace transform of x, then you subtract off uh, one power down in s, and then you have that initial condition, and then you go down another power of s, which means it disappears, then you go to the first derivative of s. So basically as you go down in powers of s, you go up in derivatives effectively. And the Laplace transform just sticks around on the front thing. So it's this term minus this term, and this is all going to be equal to the Laplace transform of zero, which is going to give you zero. Even though we don't have that in the table, you should know that the Laplace tra transform of zero is zero, because when you think back to that integral, e to the minus st times the function in this case, the function is zero. So we're integrating zero from uh, zero up to infinity. So of course, we're going to get zero. So when you're trying to Laplace a zero, you're going to get a zero. All right, so let's switch colors a little bit and continue. Now we need to simplify things here. So what we're going to have is, working with this, we'll have s cubed times the Laplace of x, right? Minus s, here, this is the way I'm going to write it here. I have s squared, but it's x of 0. Every initial condition in this problem is equal to 3. So for, for here, we're going to have 3s squared. From this one, we're going to have 3s, because this one's also equal to 3, right? And then for this one, we're going to have just minus 3. So this is basically coming directly from this term. Now we're going to subtract off this term, and we're going to be pushing this negative in as we go. So let's do a negative. Here we'll have s squared Laplace of x, right? Negative times negative gives me a positive. This is going to be a 3s, 
from here. Negative times negative gives me another positive. This is going to give me, again, a 3, and then this is all equal to 0. So we fit it all in one line. All right. Now we can do a little, have a little bit of fun because we can see that this plus 3 is going to cancel with this minus 3. And we can see that this 3s is also going to cancel with this minus 3s. So things simplify quite a bit. And let's just rewrite everything. s cubed Laplace of x, like this. And what we'll do is we'll say, let's move this Laplace closer so we can have them closer together so we can basically factor here in a second is what we're going to do. All right? And then this minus 3s squared is going to be there. I believe that's all of the terms here. So we have s cubed Laplace minus s squared Laplace minus 3s squared is equal to 0. So we've basically just simplified this. Now what we want to do is here, notice we have a common situation. We have a common term. I'm not talking about the s's here. I'm talking about the Laplace transform being in both of these places means we can factor it out just like anything else. So let's pull this out, and inside we'll have s cubed minus s squared, just like that. And on the right-hand side, we can take this term and move it to the other side, making it positive 3s squared. Ultimately, whenever you substitute in, you get this Laplace transform in there, you want to solve for L of x, solve for, for the Laplace transform, because you want to invert it. So let me change colors. And we'll say now that the Laplace transform of x is equal to 3s squared divided by this whole term, which is s cubed minus s squared. Right, so that's absolutely awesome. Uh, but notice that we have an s squared on the top, an s squared on the bottom, and an s cubed right there. So one way to do it would be to factor an s squared out of the bottom, which would then cancel, or you can just do it this way. You can slice through this, slice through this, and slice through the exponent because I have one s left over here. So the bottom line is you can say Laplace transform of x is equal to 3 over s minus 1. 3 over s minus 1. Now notice that this whole problem looked ugly, and now it finally got down to something we know how to handle. We know that we don't know the answer to the problem, but we know what its Laplace transform is equal to. We know this. And it was all algebra basically getting to this point. Okay? So we want to figure out what this is equal to. We know we can pull the 3 out. So what we can do is we can say, just to make it absolutely explicit, x of t is equal to the inverse Laplace of this. We can pull the 3 out, which means it's going to be 3 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1. This we know how to inverse Laplace. It's one of the simplest things that we have on our table. 1 over s minus 1 is going to give us e to the 1t. All right. So then what you can say is x of t is equal to 3 times e to the 1 times t. So e to the 3t. 3e to the t. Lambda in this case is just 1. So it's e to the lambda t, which is 1t. So that's the answer right there. Again, notice we got the full answer. This is the full answer. We don't have to apply any initial conditions or anything, because that was already taken care of as part of the solution process. When we apply the Laplace transform to these derivatives, we get the derivatives required to basically substitute in our initial conditions. We did that substitution way back up here. Then from this point down, it's basically algebra. We have to cancel s's, cancel 3's. We collect the Laplace transform, move all the s's to one side. What you always expect to get for these problems is a Laplace transform of what we care about equal to some pure function of s. And then you hope that you know enough to invert that back to the time domain, and then you have the answer. All right. So this problem was a little bit more complicated than the last one because it did involve a little bit more manipulation. But notice that when we get down to this spot, this is very easy to invert. And that's why I'm kind of ratcheting up the complexity little by little here. As we go through, we will find here in a minute that it's a little bit harder to do the inversion at the end. There's a couple of little tricks along the way that I'll teach you. But it's all basically going to be using what we have on the board with just a little finesse and a little bit of practice with, with different problem types. The basic idea is the same. Laplace transform to both sides, substitute the initial conditions, solve for the Laplace of x on one side, get all of the s's on the other, and invert back. That's what you're going to be doing for every one of these problems. So follow me on to the next section. Make sure you understand this problem. Solve it yourself, even though you've seen me solve it. 
and let's go and continue our building our skills with differential equations uh, as we build our complexity of problems as we go along here.